The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. This episode is brought to you by Capital Group, one of the oldest and largest asset management companies in the world, managing multi-asset, equity and fixed income investment strategies for different types of investors. Since 1931, Capital Group has been singularly focused on delivering superior, consistent results for long-term investors using high conviction portfolios, rigorous research and individual accountability. Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I've got Fraser Jack with me here today. Fraser, thank you. This is a bit of a role reversal. I think the very first podcast that I was a guest on was with was with you a few years ago. No. Well, there you go. Now you're the host. How cool is that? <laughs> the role reversal. I'm the host. You're the guest. Thank you for, for joining me. We were just saying uh, before we press record there that I suspect anyone listening to an ensemble podcast has probably come across you at some point whether whether online whether uh, whether uh, another podcast of yours that you've had you know different ones over the years but maybe tell us a bit about your journey we're going to talk about video SOAs is the topic for today but uh, you know, your journey and advice before we get before we get to that where have you been yeah my journey and advice started um, pre financial services reform back in uh, in 2000 2001 um, so I got to see all the change that, that went through in that space. I, uh, I had my own advice practice for about 13 years um, and sold that uh, sold that sort of around 2014. And um, and yeah, I've been working in advice tech and reg tech and cyber security since then. Um, but yeah, certainly spent um, uh, 13 odd, 14 odd years um, writing my own SOA. So I, I'm well equipped of what's inside of the statement of advice. So um, uh, you and I have spoken obviously about um, statements of advice in the past so yeah I thought it'd uh, be a good, good opportunity to come and chat about it yeah yeah so, so 13 14 years of running your own business how, how, you, you you must have enjoyed it for a while there because that's a, that's a decent stint so it wasn't something that you oh I definitely did I definitely did enjoy it and what I really enjoy is the, the client advisor relationship I think that's a really really cool part of the advice um, the relationships you form with your clients the 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 levels of trust that they go to helping them out when they need it, whether it be claim or or through difficult moments in their life, um, giving them something to look forward to, all these sort of things that are really, really great about advice. Definitely had many parts I loved. There was probably a few parts I didn't love as well and got frustrated with, uh, hence the reason I sort of sold my practice. But but yeah, there, you know, lots of great parts and lots of great communities too uh, involved. Obviously, the ensemble community. I did a lot with the AFA community back in my day with the Gen X. Um, so yeah, it's definitely definitely good relationships with other uh, advisors around as well. Yeah, you've like you've definitely. So what's that getting on to nine, nearly ten years ago now? That you, you've definitely kept you've definitely kept kind of your fingers involved in in that financial advice space as much as you might not be advising today, but. Uh, different podcasts we commented on AFA work you're doing so doing a little bit with the FPA at the moment we you know I was in a session of yours just the other week down here in Melbourne so you've you've kept a pretty close ties connections with the advice community that's for sure yeah I feel like um I feel like it's that's exactly right it's about again if we go back to that advisor client relationship everything's sort of been about that when I left advice the, my frustrations were around technology the the slow uptake of technology. Um, how can you do things for a client that a client's going to have a better, you, you know, client experience? Um, there was lots of things going back, you know, going back then, ten years, um, that that I thought could be solved and fixed. And I've sort of devoted my time, I guess, trying to fix and solve those things. And uh, and I, I I feel like I've got some way towards it, but there's also some way to go, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And so and so the so the I guess the big thing that you seem to be working on at the moment you've been doing some work with the fpa around around rolling out a, a video SOA uh process now I, I sat through your um 
your, your session down here in Melbourne, as I said, a couple of week, couple of weeks ago, and 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 I, and I went into that and I listened to a couple of you. Know, you've done some interviews with, with with Corey and some other bits and pieces around. I haven't watched any of the FPA videos. I went into there uh, to kind of to dive into it, and 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 a video SOA wasn't isn't a isn't what I thought a video SOA was, and, and I suspect that's probably the same for most people in the advice space. Can you, can maybe if we start off by explaining what is a video SOA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I guess I have to put my hand up and take some of the blame here because when Ben Marsh and I first put this together, we thought it's it's a video of the statement of advice, which um, it is eventually. But what we failed to sort of do, and, and I have to put my hand up and take some responsibility here is we didn't explain it well enough for the advice community to go, oh, of course that's what it is. Uh, and so what I do now is I explain it as a recording of the advice conversation, uh, which of course a recording means, you know, recording the video uh, and the end product is the the client, you know, went through the advice conversation and they have a copy of the conversation or a copy of the video. So, and, we, and when you do it that way, so people go, oh, yeah, now, now I get it. Um, but then how do I do that? You know, that next part. So... Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, uh, as you'll probably attest to, quite a simple process, quite a simple thing. It's not really that complicated, especially for all of us that did plenty of Teams meetings and Zoom meetings over COVID um, or before COVID for a lot of advisors and, and a lot of people that have been recording conversations or recording their, 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 their advice conversations already, those people go, oh, I kind of already do that now or all I have to do is do the structure and... I'm doing video SOA. So, um, yeah, it, it it had this thing about it, I think, that people thought, oh, I don't have to record a video. That doesn't save me any time than, you know, for, for doing a paper version. So, so many questions have come back um, over the past couple of years um, that Ben and I have been working on this. And, and um, and yeah, I've, I've, I've heard plenty and I've got lots of rebuttals for all of the questions. So, what, what's, what started it in the first place? Like, where, where did the idea to go down this journey of, the video SOA project. Where did that even start? Yeah, it started back in um, where we. I did some work with with the FPA on um, digital advice and how do we then digitize advice and make it simpler uh, using advice tools and 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 software, which is really cool. But all the time sitting in RG one seven five was this this one seven five dot one six eight line that talked about you can uh, a, a statement of advice can be. Um, uh, notes of the conversation that already took place, e.g. E- via telephone, that opened the door for um, a lot of firms were doing, you know, recorded phone calls and, and, and they wanted to do telephone advice in that scoped way. Um, but all the time, the, the legislation was already there or the reg guides were already there in place to talk about the fact that this could be done. And so we set about this, this, this idea of um, how do we then, you know, record a conversation, record the video, um, you know, without changing... Uh, any of the regulatory requirements because obviously that's a you know as we know that's a long and slow process uh, and without having to introduce really any new technology to say um, you know if it, if advisors are already using a particular type of technology to um, to model or to do projections or to what it, well, you know to house their data um, without using new technology or changing any legislation could this be done and we just went well of course it can um, and so we. The first stage in the process was really engaging ASIC on the in the conversation, going, um, "Hey, we've got this idea. What do you think of it?" Um, their response was, "Yeah, well, that's you know, as so long as you their their big thing is obviously they want quality advice provided to consumers. They want consumers to be protected, um, and so they're uh, and you know through a few other things, obviously, but um, but they, their advice was, yeah, if if you if you're providing good advice and you're doing, uh, I don't want to use that good advice word, but if you're providing quality." financial uh, advice and you're doing it in a way where the consumers understand the information and they um, yeah, and they're informed and they can make a reasonable um, you know reasonable decision based on the information they've, they've been given um, then then absolutely it can be done so yeah the first step was engaging ASIC and then the, this the next step after that was to to take that out to planners hmm. I think that's an interesting that's a good point to to make you know you mentioned ASIC a couple of times there that that ASIC has been involved in this it's not as if it was you or Ben or, or or anyone else that's kind of just run off on your own. The the people that are ultimately going to be you know hit, hitting you over, hitting you with a stick if you've done something wrong. They they have been involved in in the process of getting to where you've actually gotten to with this whole project and you've been rolling out. So 
yeah, it's good to be part. part yeah, of and it. the and the and the other really, um, you know, the the ombudsman type stuff. You know, um, you talk about the Africans of the world. They they listen to a lot of recordings already because obviously a lot of complaints that come through could be a complaint from a institution, and that institution records all their phone calls, and so they're they're very much used to listening to conversations, and um, actually they find those very quick quick to to make determinations because they can instantly hear what happened, the tone of the voice, conversation that took place, if disclosures were or weren't made, um, if clients did or didn't understand, it's pretty quickly to to make a determination when there's a phone call uh, recorded. And so they actually find recordings more helpful than, um, you know, one one side of a story put written on paper and then another side of a story written on paper and then it's a who said, they said, we said scenario uh, and then they've got to try and determine who was more right than the other and so you know recordings certainly help them uh, in their journey and so they were very much around the same same boat you know like that's great record the conversation we'll know straight away if it's a complaint or if it's not yep perfect and and so we're just in the very early stages of trying to roll out a, a, a video project here the video soa project here we just had a, a meeting earlier this morning on it and and we'd had allocated some time and i think we quickly realized that, that it's bigger than the time that we had allocated to a to, to do it, so you, you mentioned this, but the way that I've been describing it to people in and around around the business here, because you know we've done like a lot of businesses because of COVID, we do a lot of video meetings, and so we you know we're, we're presenting advice via video, but that's a sixty odd page PDF document. But the way that I've been describing it to to people around here is that 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 if I say the right words and if I record that conversation, then that is my statement of advice. And the client at the end can say, "Thank you, James. I accept your recommendations of of, of that advice," and then and then off we go. And this is a you know, I wanted to kind of emphasise the point for anyone that, that might be listening because it's it's been it's something that we've had to kind of jump over for, for the lot of advisors here. This isn't about generating a document, some written document that your power plan has done, and then presenting that and recording you presenting that sixty odd page document. This is scrap your sixty page document. Have some other prompts, and there's a you know, you, you've built a PowerPoint presentation, which is really helpful. But but if you have the right format and you effectively say the right words, that is my statement of advice. That is my file note. That's my everything. I've got that recording. I've got it saved somewhere. Can provide that to the client, and that becomes my video SLA. Yeah, I, I love the word statement of advice because I say you're stating. Often the client expects you to state the advice to them in the meeting anyway. You're stating it as in using words and language and. Um, body language and, and and all these other things in the meeting. It's not a document of advice. We don't call it a document of advice. You know, we call it a statement. And so you can actually state those words, as you said, out of your mouth in a way that the client will understand. And if the client, let's face it, you've got different clients sitting in front of you. So if you've got somebody who's quite analytical, they you might uh, they've got a, maybe a legal background, you'll say things in a different way than if they're a tradie, right? And so you'll explain things depending on their literacy level in a different way, depending on um, all these other things. So so I think I think you adjust, you naturally adjust the way you say things to the person who's sitting in front of you or the people that are sitting in front of you because uh, especially when there's more than one person sitting in front of you because, you know, you're trying to work out who knows more than the other and, and bring both both people in the conversation uh, along on the journey, you know, with you to make sure that they all understand the information. So, you know, I lo- I love the conversation around the the, the 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 challenge that says if you weren't allowed to put any words on paper as a rule, how are you going to demonstrate that advice to your clients? And um, you know, we know the SOA has certain um, uh, you know points that you need to hit. You know, you need to talk about you know the reasonable basis for your advice, which is their existing current position. Um, and you might want to get it, you know, you might want to get them to confirm that position is correct, et cetera, before you go and make any projections because they might be wrong. Um, Letting somebody know what the scope of today's conversation is going to be about, that you're focusing on this and not that, pretty helpful in a conversation. Um, But again, doesn't have to go into that big written long document, but you can explain that in a way that that client understands it. Obviously, there was an advisor in in the the group that, that, that we had a couple of weeks ago and, and she spoke about she had some new client coming in this is a you know from a few years back and for whatever reason it had like a computer just completely died the advice was on her computer she was going to pr- connect it to the screen or whatever in them in the meeting and the whole thing just disappeared there was nothing that she could do about it the client was like five minutes away 
and and walked into the meeting and, and delivered the advice verbally to her without anything, without anything on a on a piece of paper. And the client said, "Oh no, that was fantastic. We'd much rather it that way than this whole document." She's obviously followed up with the whole document to make sure that she had covered herself properly. But uh, yeah, she shared a story of that she in in a way she's done a she's done a video SOA before we were ever talking about doing it now. So. Yeah, and if I talk about the client experience, the, the client loved that experience because the it, it it's generally what they remember, right? You know, if you ask a client, any of your clients, what they remember about the advice you provided them, it's probably the things that you said. Um, and if they can be in that meeting and there, uh, and 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 you know what part of the the process is, obviously we ask the client to to deliver that strategy back to us in their words. Um, and if that's the case and they're saying the advice, they understand it better and they might be explaining it to one another if it's a couple. And yeah, just just being able to say that. They'll remember what you say. They'll If they say it themselves, they'll remember it even better from an adult learning perspective. Uh, what's in the document tends not to be remembered that much anyway. And then they've got the video recording of you saying it and them saying it to, to be able to go back and watch. So so, so if, the, cause if the end goal in this you know, video SOA uh, process that the the different advisors might be undertaking at the moment is is to be able to deliver advice like this a, you know a, a statement of the uh, of the advice that's coming from from my mouth what are the building blocks or what are, for someone that's just thinking oh this is a great idea how do I actually do that where am I starting my first interaction with the client where am I starting in this in this process what should I be doing yeah we, well uh, we we would probably start with the fact that one, don't change your advice process to start with. Just keep your advice process as is without trying to confuse anything um, and just start recording everything. So record your record your meetings um, of your discovery meeting and, and any strategy meetings you might have. Record them all. Record the video, the, the, the statement of advice meeting um, without changing anything. Still do it the way that you do it. Uh, just record everything. And then if you hit the points within you know what what the points are required in a statement of advice in the conversation your actual video recording could be a statement of advice and so we use an agenda um, for that process you know to be able to make sure you hit the points but um, if you you go back to the beginning and you're recording your needs analysis meeting or your discovery meeting or your goals meeting or your investment philosophies and all those sort of things that you have with the client and give them a copy that's a really, really good way of starting the process. Just hit record and let them know that you record all your meetings and they can have a copy so everything's transparent. Um, or that if they're not sure of anything, they can go back to the recording and just get into that. I think that's the very first easy step in the process. Then understanding, and obviously we provide an agenda which makes sure that you hit the points, that you can go and change your agenda. But but also you use a lot of software and you use the software, for example, to store your client data. And that could be their current position and you could pull up that page and say just confirming these details are correct and they might look at that and go, yep, they're correct. And then you might pull up a, um, you know, something else that talks about the scope or the strategies that you're using or how the, how the strategies you're using um, that helps them meet their needs and objectives or their goals. You might pull up a, 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 a modeling software that provides an outcome. You might pull up you know, a, a quoting tool that you've used or, or uh, some research um, you know, some research software that you have. And you can actually demonstrate to those clients using that software. And if you were sharing your screen on a Zoom or you're sharing your screen on a Teams and, and you're recording that conversation, then what you're showing the client is recorded as well as them, uh, their voices, you know, it might be small small photos or them, um, thumbnails of them, in, in, you know, in, in the corner of the video watching and nodding along. Um, but that's a demonstration of them listening in. It's a demonstration of them um, making, nodding their head as a good little demonstration of understanding. Um, authorities to proceed along the way are all, are all brilliant because you're saying, right, so this is the scope and are you okay with that? Yeah, can we move on? Yes, move on. You know, like um, giving them giving them the agenda up front and saying this is what all the things we're going to cover in today's meeting and then making your way through those points, which just happen to be the points that you're required to provide in a statement of advice. It's It seems like to me it's a fairly simple process but it does take a little bit of confidence and i think there is a there is a um the starting point that says um let's start with where we are now just record the meetings and then work our way along what i call sort of a a spectrum to where you're comfortable enough to go i don't need to produce the paper anymore or if you do want to produce the paper let's give the clients what they actually want on paper which might be a financial plan rather than a statement of advice and you can just design a two or three page 
these are the strategies, these are the outcomes you're going to receive if you do these things, and these are the products we've selected off the back of it. That, that, that's the bit where we're, where we're trying to, we're, we're grappling with right now is this, what is it that I'm delivering to the to the client? So there's the there's the agenda that, that you've put together and it's got the different points that we need to hit on. So we're, we're trying to build it for, you know, there's 15, 16 advisors here. So it's not just one person. We're trying to build something that's repeatable by everyone and that, you know, that that we can kind of keep everyone saying the same thing and that they're, that they're, that they're saying the right thing. What we're trying to do with at the moment, and I'm interested in, in your feedback on it, is we've gone down the route of trying to put the different elements that you're referring to that you're kind of pulling into that conversation. We're, our first iteration of this is that we're trying to put all of that in a slide deck so that you know we're starting with your 15, 20 slides or whatever it is that you've got in terms of the points that we should be hitting on, but then we're adding into there a flow chart and a statement of their current position and a cost comparison table and a this thing and a that thing and a, pro- and a projection. So, so rather than me chopping and changing different things that I'm sharing on the screen with the client to be recording, that it's all in the one place. The first ver- version of this that, we're, that we've gotten to, we're just looking at it, it's like, it looks from the outset, it almost looks like a statement of advice and are we actually achieving anything by doing it that way? How, how, there's a few people that are doing it. How, how are people that are doing it that's working really well? It, you know what? That, and, and that is a very, very common a- approach to this because um, we have spent 20 years since financial service reform came in and doing these same thing this way. Um, we prepare the we prepare, we prepare the advice. We then take that say snapshot of the advice and we stick it into a document or a PowerPoint or whatever it might be, and then we present that to the client. and And, and that, that's a really hard habit to break. Yeah. Um, and it does take a little bit. And and look, it could just be a, a great little stepping stone for what you might get to at the other end. And 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 when I say stepping stone, it's someone like yourself. I know you're going to pick this up really fast and 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 be able to run with it. But when you're bringing 20 advisors through a cohort, then you you all got to move as slow as the slowest person, right? So that's the the idea. So um, so yes, I get I get what you're saying. Power planning has been an interesting conversation in this statement of advice for quite a while. You know, you still need to do the research. You still need to do the strategy work. You still need to understand what's going to be the best interest of the client and put that put that. Uh, you know, what order are we doing everything in? You know, what's the you know all that stuff really important what's going to achieve the best outcome for the client great but then at that point if you set those scenarios up in your software and you're comfortable with moving between screens you know from your agenda to your software to then you don't need to worry about customizing each uh, a powerpoint presentation for each client and that's when the savings of time really kicks in um, because there's probably not a great deal of time saving between um, paper to to PowerPoint, but it's that next step once the time's having kicked in. But if you don't, if you're not comfortable with going from point eight all the way to point, you know, D, then you do have to go to B, C, D, um, and 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 go along the journey that way. So yeah, you definitely the 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 benefit would be in the the skill and confidence of the advice team, um, but not so much the uh, the time savings. And then later on, the time savings would kick in. Yeah, yeah, and you you mentioned. Time savings, that, that's what we've worked through to say, well, me, me, the advisor, I still need to have these meetings with my client to get to this point where I know and understand them and you know, we, we would have sent them a fact find to get another piece of paper, but just getting them to sign. But, you know, we, we've had these series of meetings to get to, to get to understand them. I still need to do all of that. We still need to do all of the research around the existing super funds and insurance policies and all of this you know, comparisons and everything that we've had to do now, all of that still needs to happen. The bit that we're hoping there'll be the the time saving in our business is is the turning around of what we used to know as a written statement of advice, where that might take one of our power planners all day to do the modeling and then generate the advice and tailor the advice document and all the rest of it that that ideally that we can get that part of the process down to one or two hours. So instead of the power planner doing one a day, they might be able to do three advice you know, requests a day, but yeah, maybe it's we need to look at this that they're actually so they're doing the modelling, they're doing the projections, they're loading up scenarios, and then they say, "Hey, James, I've done it. There you go." And I use the agenda plus the scenarios that are loaded into Airways X Plan, the scenarios that are loaded into X Plan, 
to deliver my advice that way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think another saving could be in the, the concept, a lot, a lot of advisors currently and often do strategy meetings, right? So you go to the, the fact find, you'll present a couple of strategy ideas to the client, get them across the the financial literacy piece of it to say, you know, do you understand how this works? We'll do that. We'll come back to you on looking at the products, but the strategy would be this, this, and this. And they go, yep, yeah, I get that now. I understand. Um, and so you're building, you're kind of building that with the client whilst the, the advice is being produced. And so um, that also allows uh, advisors to be confident that the document of advice is going to be as accurate as possible to the, what the client is going to say yes to at the other end. Right, and so what I think this process does is allows you to record the the initial meeting, and then in the SOA meeting you can cover off on those strategy conversations and 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 the advice because you're not actually locking in the advice into a document as such. You actually still got the the fluid nature of a client to say, oh yeah, no, that's not quite right. My income actually changed last week, oh, or I got a bonus, or something is coming in. Or they can say something else, and or you can get to the product point, and they can go, "Yeah, we don't like that product brand. Can we have a different brand because our friends use that brand, and and you know they don't like it, and we don't now we don't like it, or something out of the blue like that." You go, "Oh, okay, that was interesting." Um, but you can chop and change, not necessarily the strategy outcomes, but you can chop and change some of the things along the way. So if something's something minor changes inside the conversation, and let's say they go, "Oh, can we now?" change that because we now want to do this other thing as well you go okay great and you can change that on the go so i liken it to like you know baking a cake with a client sitting in front of you and if they turn around and go oh no we're, we're dairy free you haven't already baked the cake um and then have to rebake the cake so you don't have to reproduce the soa if there's any minor changes along the way you actually just add that into the conversation yeah and so and so that's a that's an uplifting the confidence of advisors to be able to use these different tools live with 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 a with a with a client you know we were talking to someone else here earlier about an insurance product insurance products probably the easiest thing to deal with that if you've you've recommended a particular product but there's a certain sum insured you can very easily go into that that provider's website adjust the sum insured you know press calculate there's a new premium and the client goes yeah happy days and and, and move on There'll be some other bigger changes that that for a power planner that's in the modelling all day every day. Oh yeah, that's easy. Click 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 click. Spits out, spits it out. But for someone like me that isn't in that every day, there's a bit of an education piece to um to get to that. Yeah, absolutely. If you're if you're not co- confident, uh, because you're probably already already confident, but if you're not confident or confident with the the technology, uh, that can that can be a, a stumbling block. But I mean, at the end of the day. I think for you know spending a, a couple of hours working your way through the software and getting some lessons around it, um, for to to be able to um, to to get some training on that software to become confident with it, it might take you a few hours. Um, but I would dare say that's probably a lot of extra time saving that you could make up in the, over the long haul. And and um, and some of the um, you know some of the objections, of course, have been you know time and cost of storage and 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 these sorts of things and, and and i just i asked people to say well what you know what could you save um in a percentage term if you weren't doing the paper documents and um you'll you know you i think we went around the room in the, in the meeting that you're in we talked about what percentage of everybody's time did they think or was the the, the planned production piece was spent on that um research and working out the strategy and what percentage is is um uh, spent on the actual creating of the advice document itself, and, and if you could save that, you know, that second piece, what would it be? And you know, that varied from you know forty sixty to sixty forty and backwards and forth. But it tends to even itself out about half the cost of the advice production is is producing the paper document. And, and I suppose there's also a, there's an opportunity to to bring other people into those advice presentation meetings. So that, that that advice meeting, as much as it might be James the advisor's delivering the advice. There's nothing stopping me having someone from our power planning team that has eight years power planning experience that knows the modeling thing in and out. That because they're not spending all day generating one advice document, they might be loading up some some scenarios. They could come along to that meeting with me, and and it might actually make their job more interesting for them. Maybe they've got aspirations to become an advisor or something, and and that's a stepping stone in their own career journey. 
that, hey, I'm not the one that's under the pressure to oh, I have to remember where do I update this thing so that I can get the projection right. Someone that's doing it day in, day out can come into that meeting and it might actually make their job more interesting for them because it's some aspiration that they have on their career journey too. Yeah, a- absolutely. I mean, everybody loves seeing um, the the great client outcomes, right? And so whether you're an advisor or whether you're a power planner or an associate advisor or an admin stuff, everybody loves to see that the clients go, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, like that's the that's the glory piece, right? And so the advisors here tend to get that, but the rest of the team don't tend to see the client's face light up when they see those results. And so you're absolutely right. You know, they can, you know, those those team members, they could be associate. I bet every, every associate financial advisor uh, in the country or, or or people doing the gap year, I bet you they know how to use the software. And I bet you they know, are they really, if they don't, they really want to learn it. So, um, so yeah, definitely. And, um, and, and them seeing what the outcomes were for what the, um, you know, what the client is, them seeing what the, um, what the, the, the goals are, the clients, what the next steps are too, if they're doing admin, um, them seeing that, um, you know, or after this, we need to do blah, 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 blah. Um, I think that's a really good opportunity for them as well. Yep. So maybe, maybe the, the the last part of the the whole thing is like, what do I actually need in terms of technology? And we're you know we're recording a, a podcast here using a using a particular provider, but but what do I what would I need in terms of technology to start to be able to do this in my business? Yeah. So so hardware and software, and, and depending on whether you're doing an online meeting or an in office meeting, obviously. Um, when we're talking about software, uh, I would suggest people start with what they know. If they use Teams, use Teams. If they if they if they use Zoom, use Zoom. I think uh, you know, it's re- recording to your computer, and there's there's some uh, people aren't really sure about where the, the when they do start recording these meetings, where does the file go? How does it save? All these sort of things. So there's a little bit of upskilling involved in, in that. Um, but and if you and if you're doing an in person meeting, uh, then you know you you need some hardware as well around the op. Uh, inside the say the the boardroom or the office or the meeting room, um, in in respect of a, a microphone, so you can pick up the sound and and a video a, a webcam, you know, it's usually an external webcam. Um, but most um, most you know offices would be set up that way with a webcam um, on top of a TV inside a boardroom or whatever it might be, and and some um, and so if you've got that facilities, then great. Uh, if you don't, then I would say you you probably should invest in those things anyway. And, and even if you're just doing online meetings, you probably should invest in it. Uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars in a microphone that's nice and clear to to, to talk to people. Um, obviously, you know, laptop microphones are getting better and better, but um, uh, doesn't doesn't hurt to have a decent mic or um, uh, you know, a decent webcam uh, and some lighting on your face if if you're doing those online meetings anyway. It's a that you know that's a great investment. I think whether you're doing video SOAs or not, if you're doing online meetings, so I think there's not too much additional hardware and software required than what you already have. To be fair, yeah. And the, the the sharing of the video file with with the client that's uh, how so that you know that I guess one those video files can be can be quite large and if you're recording all of these videos so in terms of a a storage in, within your own system you're going to need a, a fair bit of storage to cover off on that it's not terribly expensive but you but you're going to need a you're going to need a fair bit how how are people sharing that video you know so there's ho- hosting it like. YouTube, Vimeo, they, these kind of things. You can use one of these providers to upload the video and host it, and then they can view it on 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 their site. Do you think that's a good idea, or is there some better way of getting the video to the client? Uh, yeah, a little bit of both. So you've got two issues with video files, and 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 similarly, you've got the same issues with document files. Right? It's it's just the document files don't aren't, aren't as big. The first one is security, and that is you know how do you send it in a secure format and that's the same whether it's a paper file uh, a, a you know a pdf document or a video um, file so you know how do you send it to the client deliver it to the client i guess the best way i think is through a share a sharepoint or a, um, a, a client portal or a shared drive in some way so you can say here is the here is the link you can download the link there might be a password on it uh download the file and store it back in your device um and then you keep a copy in your vault at work in your X plan or in your share drive or both, um, SharePoint or both, and and the client keeps a copy on their computer. And, and I always suggest, from security reasons, you don't keep a copy in your email because if somebody gets into your email, then that's a problem. Um, and it will also fill their email box up, um, storage up. 
But the the next one is that is around that um, storage and that size. And yes, the files are larger, um, and so you might need to get an extra terabyte or a couple of terabytes and spend the cost of what you would spend on one statement of advice production a year on on a whole lot of more storage. And so and so that's the other part of it. So the size of the file, I don't think it's too much of a problem. To be fair, storage is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. You know, as the years go by, more and more terabytes are available. And and so yeah, I would say to the client store and the same same as you would. If, if I send a, you know, posted your statement of advice document, you take it out of your mailbox, you take it inside and you put it in your filing cabinet, um, use that same methodology when you're sharing personal identifiable information with a client, um, which a statement of advice tends to tends to be. Perfect. All right. Do you think there's anything on the video SOA process we haven't touched on? Um, no, I think the, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's quite simple, but it does just has a, those few moving parts. You know, there's the agenda. You stick to the agenda, um, cover the points that are required in the legislation. We all know what they are already. Um, I think one of the interesting things that I heard uh, in one of the sessions, actually in one of the Melbourne sessions, was um, the concept around from a from a lawyer that does a lot of work with in compliance and legal. Um, who said advisors are very, very good at explaining their advice to the clients. Um, They're very bad at writing the advice (laughs) to the clients. So why would you do what you're really bad at? Why don't you just do what you're really good at and explain it to the clients? So, yeah, I love that. Uh, I love that term. Yeah, fantastic. So, so if anyone wants any more info, this this agenda, is it this agenda that we keep mentioning? Like I've got a copy because I went along to the to the event. Is that is that available anywhere? Is it FPA members? Is that on there? Yeah, so FBA FBA members can go to the, their portal, and there is a uh, there's an area there called Soap Box S O A P Statement of Advice, Advice Production Box Soap Box of videos Box set of videos are on there of um, us talking through a lot of the stuff and the agendas on there as well, which is a PowerPoint slide of all the points that you probably should hit in the Statement of Advice. Um, and the other thing is there's uh, a lot of the tech providers are getting ready to put some videos at the, together at the moment to put out another box set. Um, so the, the the tech providers that you will know and love and the names that you'll be familiar with are all putting some examples together of how they would operate in the video SOA world for the for the uh, the next iteration of the of the box set. Um, so box yep. two. So that's coming Perfect. out. Then Fraser, if anyone need, wants to reach out to you, where can people find you? I would say LinkedIn is probably the best thing um, um, or, or, or at my Cyber Collective website, um, the Cyber Collective but uh, that LinkedIn Fraser Jack, you should be able to um, send me a message and reach out if you've got any questions or want to know more. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. Thank, thank you, James. And I look forward to following your journey through this process too, and, and bringing your business along with the journey. And and, and on, one of the great things I loved about when you came along to the workshop is you brought your compliance team with you to the workshop. Yeah. So you were just like these guys need. I already know. I already know what this is about. These guys need to hear it. Let's go. And so. Uh, when we went around the room, it was like, what are you trying to get ever? So I'm trying to work out how I could do this yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I mean? it's, a, it's a little bit more than what did we need to do yesterday, but we'll we'll get there. Yeah, I'm yep. excited. I'm looking forward to finding, uh, following your journey and see how you go with it. Perfect. Well, thanks. Thanks again. Uh, chat soon. Okay, thanks.